everybody welcome back with the plapper platypus is the name and today we are looking at ads on a website no um i figured it'd be fun because the game is compared to xcom girls frontline 2 exilium the game we're talking about today is commonly referred to xcom and there's this guide here basically how is it different than xcom so i thought it'd be kind of fun to uh, just kind of go over it and be like is it really just xcom or is it gonna be different so because some people don't like xcom some people like me love xcom so i'm kind of interested to know where the differences are myself and so we're going to learn together so the differences between traditional xcom light and x and a girls frontline to exilium so they are both turn-based combat systems right you can see them xcom is obviously here on the left here on the right now the very first thing i kind of skimmed over this that way i didn't just have to read it but one of the very first things that i noticed that they said was there's no hit chance and girls frontline too all your attacks are always going to hit guaranteed now the amount of damage they do may be different it looks here if we look at this it looks like that maybe there's like a 60 percent chance to hit armor or something like that so maybe there is some sort of percent chance mechanic but it's not going to be a hit chance right xcom you could just miss this game you cannot just whiff so the next big one is cover because there is no hit chance right this doesn't increase your uh full cover half cover doesn't decrease your chance to get hit or get hit by crits instead what it's going to do is they both both half cover and heavy cover give you flat 30 percent damage reduction so being in cover is still going to be important especially when you're getting guaranteed hit reducing it by 30 percent is huge the main difference is that half cover allows you to basically jump over it and go you could do all your attacks um and you could just like move through it whereas full cover blocks line of sight so if attacks require line of sight they're not going to be able to hit you um also though if you're at full cover you're going to be able to do i guess they call it a leaning attack but basically you're going to be able to lean and use all your attacks you know so you will still have line of sight of enemies that aren't also behind full cover so i am interested if you're in full cover and they're in full cover neither of you have line of sight how exactly does it stop you from just like characters not moving because the first one that moves might get destroyed but we'll have to kind of see how that goes in more of a pvp setting maybe flanking is pretty easier or maybe you just bring in characters that are meant to uh close those gaps and take advantage of that another thing is they have multiple types of cover yes they have the normal like big heavy cover here like you would see in xcom however they also have which i believe is maybe an xcom it's hard to say but they've got basically two other types they've got a iron fence it doesn't look like iron in any of these pictures to me but basically you are going to be able maybe it is just not pictured but you're going to basically be able to shoot through it but you're not going to be able to move through it or attack melee through it and they also have the opposite an energy cover where you can move through it and attack through it with melee but you can't shoot through it so um different types of cover is actually going to be pretty interesting and so there's a you know they'll probably have a tutorial where it's like all of these are just iron fences so you're going to shoot them and then the next one's going to be all energy cover so you're going to be able to run through them and melee people and stuff like that but you're not going to be able to shoot so actually pretty cool i hope they have some characters that are able to deploy these styles of cover because i think that's just a very fun mechanic to mess with them unless it's uh, super lame but also they have uh destructible cover so there are covers that are not destructible and there are ones that are destructible this is very xcom like um as well just basically sometimes you know you could throw a grenade and blow up a car or a trash can or something like that sometimes when you're shooting at an enemy you'll accidentally kill their cover as well if you like miss them but you'll blow up their cover this just seems like there are going to be like boxes and then things you can't destroy i'm sure that this will be a little more um obvious but it seems like maybe they actually have like a real hp um there, there's good basically yeah you're gonna have to use cover destruction you're just normal auto attacks on m normal characters don't seem like they'll destroy cover like they can in xcom although it's not common but it does happen in xcom like if you're shooting at an enemy behind a car sometimes you hit the car enough and it'll just blow up and you're like hey i may have missed but failed successfully you know one thing that's kind of interesting here though is it looks like they've added to the cover system i don't know maybe this wasn't at launch maybe it is but they added something called the stability in index basically characters have a stability thing and it provides 60% damage reduction when you're next to cover on top of the 30% damage reduction provided by the cover. So, but then when you get attacked, incoming attacks are re reduced the stability. So basically enemies, you're, I think this must've been, if this wasn't at launch, this must've just been a mechanic that things were getting one shot through cover with like snipers and stuff. 
Um, but this makes it so you're taking way, way less damage. Like I, if it's additive, you know, 90% less damage. If it's not additive in that way, then it's going to be a little bit less. But still, basically, you're going to have to either flank someone. The ways to ignore it, right? You could flank them. Um, if they're not next to cover, then they're not going to have any stability. Or if you can reduce their stability uh, damage reduction thing to zero. These will be all ways that you're able to get through that. And you'll actually probably have to do that in order to deal real damage. So I like that you're not going to be able to just snipe someone from across the map and ignore the 30% and try to one-shot them. You are going to have to have units that can destroy stability. They're going to have to have units that are good at killing things once that stability is broken. Um, so it seems like kind of honestly overall a pretty darn fun system. A couple other notes about that. So there is still counterplay to that. Like melee units completely ignore the stability index system, but they don't ignore the damage reduction from units next to cover. I assume even if you're flanking them, it sounds like if you're next to cover, you get that damage reduction. It, it, it'll be easier to see when we're actually playing. AOE also ignores the 60% uh, you know index. So if you're doing AOE, you'll basically pierce that, which is pretty cool. Um, some AOE attacks can also ignore cover protection, allowing them to deal full damage. And then high ground sounds busted here. Um, you basically, if you have the high ground, you deal full damage. You ignore the stability index and the cover index. That's crazy. So it, but it could be line of sight could be hard to get if they're directly next to you, basically. But if they're out there, you get to, if you have a right high ground, you just get to ignore all their defensive things and kill. So snipers on high ground is going to be crazy powerful. Um, looks like they removed all overwatch and instead they have a different type. Some characters will have skills that allow you to counter attack, um, but no traditional overwatching, which is a very, very common thing in XCOM. A lot of overwatch is very powerful and especially in XCOM, uh, enemy within, but XCOM two, which is not, you know, XCOM two, but the, the second main big XCOM, it's still really good, but it's less common because they re formed all the mission structures have time limits basically and to be honest it sounds like they do basically still have overwatch it's just like they basically broke overwatch from having it as a default skill on all characters to having a some characters will be able to do overwatch style things with surveillance some will be able to have action support skills that like if they're ally attacks they'll follow up with an attack this is limited by the range and stuff but basically Overwatch is not a default skill, but it will exist in some form in the game with a different name and slightly different functionality. And outside of that, it sounds like it is going to be pretty similar to XCOM with, again, a couple differences here in the sense that um, they have a certain amount of action points, but there is a move phase and an action phase, basically. Um, XCOM, you don't really necessarily have a move and an action phase, but once you shoot, you can't move after that, right, with some exceptions. Um, like, you know, maybe you have like a free pistol shot that allows you to, that doesn't take any AP that allows you to continue doing your stuff. Um, this has kind of a similar system where you basically get a move. The movement seems like it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be higher than XCOM or not. Um, it looks like it's based on their action points and not necessarily like you use your action points for movement and then you use your, your attacks probably don't require action points is what it seems like. But basically you have to move and then you can attack. There are skills you can't attack and then move, basically. But there are skills that will let you move again. There are skills that will let you act multiple times in a row. You know, it's going to be all kinds of different. You know, they're having a bunch of different characters, so they're all going to have different special specialties in that regard. Um, also, the main reason why you can't attack and move is, like, if you're close to someone, you can attack and then run away. Like, it's kind of like everyone moves up, attacks, runs away, moves up, attacks, runs away. It just, like increases the duration of the fight and you don't really get into it whereas if you have to dedicate if you move up to flank someone and you attack them you can't just escape afterwards without a special ability or something right so i actually like that mechanic in terms of how it plays out um but yeah so they all have ap basically decide how far they can move and then they basically just there's a bunch of rpg elements that aren't going to be in XCOM. um there are going to be a lot of skills they have ultimates um, and characters are only going to be able to learn specific things to basically them, right? Every character is going to be unique. Um, there's also elemental. And so there's, this is actually kind of interesting. I think there is elemental damage and then there are weapon type damage, basically um, light ammo, medium ammo, heavy ammo, melee and shotgun ammo. And so you, every character has both of these. You will have like a fire and a, you know, I'm a fire medium ammo user and so if you go up to an enemy and they're weak against one of them i believe you do 10 percent increased damage and two stability damage 
I don't know, but I assume it would, is if you're exploiting both of these, that you would get both the effects, right? Here, you get four stability damage and you get 20% increased damage. So being able to exploit multiple weaknesses at the same time, both elemental and with your ammo type, will actually be insanely powerful. Because again, you have in, as long as you have stability, you have like a 90% damage decrease, right? Unless you're going uh, ignoring it in some way with maybe like the AOE attacks or whatever. And so, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of RPG elements. Um, they add a rewind feature. I, I'm There's probably going to be a paid version, but additional actions, you know, skills and stuff like that. But overall, it seems like it, it's not going to feel like XCOM because of how RPG the characters are going to be. XCOM is a little more, you have like five classes or six classes or whatever, and they have a little bit of differences within them in terms of like, oh, this guy can unlock this skill. This guy can unlock this skill. Like, they're, they're, each soldier has a little bit of variance because they have like a different base stats and they have like access to slightly different like you, there's like a, a third role I think you can get of like a unique upgrade to that soldier out of a pool but most of the time snipers are snipers you know assaults are assaults that kind of stuff every character here is going to be pretty darn different um, and there'll be some that are just straight up better than others because it's a gotcha and they're eventually going to power creep characters and stuff like that. But overall, it seems way more xcom than I was expecting. This is very much not sort of Convalaria in a lot of ways. Um, but also, it, it is in a lot of ways. I doubt there's going to be much summoning of characters. This seems like this is going to be smaller amounts. Like, you're not going to want to probably bring, I don't know, six characters versus 30 characters. This seems like this will be a little more... Uh, maybe it is a six character party. I don't know, but it seems like overall the fights are going to be less about how many bodies there are and more about just really good tactics. Um, I mean, I mean, I could be wrong, of course, but it, it definitely is going to play out differently than Sword of Convalari in a lot of ways, because almost everything is ranged and everything is super far range. There is melee, but of course there's just like when characters on default have eight range and that's literally the peak of like the highest strength character on uh, highest range character in sort of kind of Valeria. Just the whole tactics is going to feel way different. The cover system is important, so you're not just going to go stand in random squares. You're going to want to be very specific with where your characters are standing. Um, and overall, I mean, this seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very, very excited, and it seems... It honestly seems like a total blast, and it is something I am excited for. I hope you're excited for it, and yeah, that's all. Anyway, much love for Platypus is per Platypus. I'll see you in the next Girls Frontline 2 video. Bye! 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 Girls run like two, it's when I get